Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Mahindra Life Space Developers Limited Q4 FY24 Earning Conference Call. As a reminder, all participants line will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. We have with us on this call today, Mr. Amit Kumar Sinha, MD and CEO, Mr. Vimal Agarwal, CFO, Mr. Kumar Sriram, Vice President, FPA and Costing and IR, and Mr. Ravindra Basu, Head Investor Relation. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Amit Kumar Sinha, MD and CEO. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Ria. Uh, much appreciated. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our quarter four FY24 earnings call. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank everyone for participating in this conference call. Uh, let me quickly cover um, a few things at the start, uh, and I'll request uh, Vimal Agarwal to, uh, to jump in with the financials, and then we'll take questions. Um, let me cover, uh, let's say, five things. Um, just to recap of where we are in our growth journey, uh, I'll touch upon sales, I'll touch upon launches, uh, business development, and uh, update on IC and IC. Uh, so a quick refresh. The first one is on our uh, strategy. As you all know, we continue to enjoy a very strong up cycle in the real estate industry. Um, Post-COVID, uh, the momentum continues in this market, um, and as we have seen through all multiple sources that this momentum is expected to continue for some more time. In fact, the GDP contribution from real estate sector is much lower than many other developed countries or even some of the other more developed uh, or developing countries. So we expect the momentum to continue. The resi segment will continue to have a lot of buoyancy uh, driven by per capita income, driven by the desire to own home across urban and non-urban centers. Uh, when we last uh, spoke in the October uh, earnings call, I shared a quick summary of our uh, strategy, which is to achieve a strong franchise at Mahindra Life Spaces, uh, which means uh, taking our aspiration to where we were in FY23 five times over, uh, which meant we'll target a pre-sale scale of eight to 10,000 crore, uh, a strong balance sheet, a strong IC and IC business, which has allowed us to uh, fund a lot of our uh, growth on the residential side, and also become uh, a target for uh, our target uh, customer segment, our attractive destination for our target customer segment. Um, that, uh, that journey has started in the last financial year, and we are glad to share that we are, uh, this year, marked the first uh, step in that direction, where we are trying to take mind and life spaces to, uh, to a franchise that's, uh, that's, that's respected, uh, scalable, and, and doing great projects for all of our customers. Um, keeping that in mind, uh, I just want to cover the next part, which is the sales part, number two. Um, we achieved a quarterly sales of roughly uh, 1,100 crore, 1,086 crore precise, um, versus uh, is a number which is one-third, 361 crore in the last quarter four FY23. Um, our full year uh, pre-sales stood at 2328, so just over 2300 crores, um, versus 800 and 1812 crore in the last financial year. Roughly, I would say 30% growth um, over that uh, that period of time. Um, we had a very uh, exciting launches during the year, especially in the quarter four, uh, and some of those uh, quarter quarter four launches will continue to give us momentum in the following year, uh, which is F25 and even F26. Um, a very interesting data to share, our new launch sales contributed uh, 1,322 crores, so 57% of our 2328 FY24 sales uh, came from new launches. The similar number was 77% uh, in FY23, so it's quite, uh, quite interesting. Um, uh, that we've not, this is a year which marked a very inflection point. The first nine months we had a lot of uh, sustenance sales that held us uh, strong, 
but in the last quarter we've seen a strong momentum and driven uh, invariably by our Mahindra Vista launch. Um, we have a very uh, strong lineup for FY25 and even for F26, uh, which we'll uh, uh, continue to share with you. Um, but my big learning from uh, the sales uh, journey in the last financial year is that we are uh, doing well to achieve our 5x aspiration that we set out um, at the uh, in the last financial year. Uh, number three, launches. Um, launches are in, you know in, in important part of our success story. Um, in Q4, we launched phase one of Mahindra Vista in Kandivali, uh, which has seen amazing success. Uh, we, as you may have seen in the news, which was very visible, uh, we had 800 crore plus of sales in just three days. Um, this is also to highlight that it's a critical project for our sustainability journey. Um, it is India's first net zero waste and energy residential project. Uh, this is at the back of our Eden project in Bangalore, which was India's first net zero energy residential project. Um, we've had um, other launches in March 2024, um, which was Mahindra Zen in Bangalore. Uh, we had, uh, we, which also received a lot of strong response, and I'll share more about how we think about launches going forward. Uh, we had our second plotted development in Chennai, um, which is um, which was on the back of a very successful first plotted development in Chennai. Uh, this is our strategy to monetize the residential land pieces that we have in Chennai and all other locations. And Mahindra Port Game Crown in Pune. This is the acquisition we had done uh, in uh, October 2023. So third quarter of last financial year, um, and by launching this in six months, we've been able to shorten the land to launch cycle that we typically see uh, in the industry as well as at, in the past with Mahindra Life Spaces. Uh, we also had other launches. We had launched uh, Phase 3 of Happiness with our day in Pune, and we are seeing strong traction uh, across that project as well. Um, uh, we see a very strong FY25 uh, because the launches that you've seen that have come in the last four to six weeks, uh, we want to make sure they are as successful as we as we can make them. Uh, that requires us to ensure market warming, uh, participation and investment with the channel partners, digital media, um, as well as many things that 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 will ensure that the launch is a slam dunk, super successful. And we'll see some of that impact come through in the following uh, financial year, which is this financial year, FY25. We also have a very healthy uh, pipeline of launches uh, that we, from the project that we acquired in the past. You, you'll, you'll see more about them in the coming uh, coming months. Number four, on the business development side, um, I think you may have seen uh, that we've been very active there compared to FY23. FY24 had four times, uh, uh, I would say, multiplier in terms of GDP enhancement. Uh, obviously, it was driven by the Wagoli deal that we did in October. The Olympic deal in Bangalore, white field that we did there uh, was a big one. And then we did another deal in Bangalore near white field uh, in our attempt to uh, deepen our penetration of the three key markets that we are participating in. Um, we also had at the start of the year the Navy uh, Mallard deal um, that we that was a society redevelopment and we are uh, hoping to launch it uh, at the earliest, ideally this quarter. Um, we continue to have a very healthy uh, you know BD pipeline, business development pipeline, anywhere from 5,000 to 6,000. This is in addition to the 4,400 that we acquired last year. It is in addition to Thane, which is 8,000, around 8,000 crore, uh, and this 5,500 to 6,000 or 5,000 to 6,000 crore BD pipeline goes through um, a very diligent uh, uh, financial assessment. Um, as we are very well aware of the fact that we're acquiring land at the uh, at the peak of the cycle, so we want to be very careful in terms of. Uh, 
uh, signing the right deals for us. Um, on the Thani deal, um, we, we have uh, we had shared in the past quarter that we, we the IITT policy is very healthy from a size and scale point of view. Uh, we've also been able to secure some of the much-needed approvals in the last quarter. Uh, now we are in the process of applying for IITT and other approvals. These uh, this is given. This this is a very large piece of land. Um, the requirements are uh, uh, we need to ensure that we are we are fully compliant and ready to launch at the earliest. Um, our two redevelopment projects uh, I touched upon Navy Mallard already uh, and Westera are, are moving along and we are hopeful at, that at least uh, one will launch in the next three to four months uh, and the second one we are closing some of the outstanding issues with the society. It's a little bit tricky because there are two different societies and you know this requires more approvals, more work to bring alignment with all the stakeholders. Uh, the fifth part um, is about IC and IC business update. Um, this is uh, continues to benefit uh, from the tailwind that we see in favor of India as a China plus one alternative. Um, we also see uh, strong momentum for domestic consumption. Uh, so IC and IC business is gaining a lot of momentum through the these two sources, external as well as internal driven. Uh, we had scaled up our IC business significantly in FY23. Um, we also had a strong year in FY24, uh, and our pipeline will allow us to secure a strong FY2025 as well. Uh, overall, we finished IC and IC in FY24 with 370 crores. Um, Jaipur giving us a very strong 76 acres of land which uh, culminated into 234 crores. And origins, uh, Chennai and World City, uh, Chennai together roughly 145, 135 to 140 crores. So very, very, very good momentum that you see on the, on the IC and IC business as well. Um, so that I covered five things. One was the overall recap of the context we are operating and our strategy to scale up our business significantly. Uh, and this year marks the first year in that direction. Uh, a, a strong year, I would say. Uh, sales momentum has been very good. Uh, launches, uh, we are getting uh, a lot of solid launches with very good sellout kind of levels. Not really sellout completely, but to the level that you want to so that you manage the velocity and pricing. Business development has started to fire uh, for us. Uh, we are seeing good amount of deals. We are closing the right deals for us to secure our future. And finally, IC and IC business continues to give us the much needed cash that allows us to fund our ready business in a healthy way. Let me uh, transfer to uh, Vimal on financials and then we'll come back for questions. Yeah. Thank you, Amit, and good morning, everyone. Moving on to the financials, uh, as you all know, many of our key operating entities from residential as well as IC and IC business are not consolidated on a line-on-line -line basis. I'll read out the key financial numbers for your reference. The consolidated total income stood at 279 crore in F24 as against 660 crore in F23. The consolidated EBITDA, including share of profit from JVs and other income, stood at 75 crore as against 61 crores in F23. The consolidated PAT, after non-controlling interest, stood at 98.3 as against 102 crores in F23. The company has net debt of 680 crores at consolidated level as per NDS, while cash in hand and bank balance and investments was approximately 193 crores. Our cost of debt stood at 8.58% on consolidated basis, while standalone cost of debt for MLDL stood at 8.57%. Net debt to equity stands at 0.36 as on 31st March 24. Net operating cash flow without land related or land acquisition related outflows was at 639 crores for F24, which reflects the strong collections in residential as well as on our IC part of our business. Uh, with this, I'll request if the floor can be open for questions, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. 
Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rohit T from Mahindra Life Space. Please go ahead. Sorry, I think there's an uh, mistake. I, I am from National Capital. So my first question, sir, is it's interesting to see the uh, momentum in the business. Curious to know, going forward with uh, with the target of raising 8 to 10 thousand, so do you think you would need to raise capital? Yeah, so Rohit, uh, we didn't uh, hear you very well. Uh, could you say where are you from? <laughs> that will be useful for the team also. But what was the question that you said? Uh, capital? Uh, yeah, so uh, am I, uh, is it better right now? Am I more audible? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I am a long term investor. I've been invested for four odd years now. Uh, I mean, I follow the company closely and uh, uh, basically in a news article it came across that we'll be looking to raise capital for growth. Uh, just wanted to get the sense of do you think you need capital to grow from our current increases to eight to ten thousand that we're planning to hit in the next four years? Yeah, yeah. So let me cover that. Uh, so uh, I think uh, our um, aspiration requires uh, a GDV of roughly, I would say roughly 45,000 crore. So very, very, uh, you know, uh, healthy aspirations, if I may can say so. Um, one third of that with Thane in our um, GDV included, we have one third in our hand already, probably actually closer to uh, maybe 20,000 crores. The the remaining uh, would be split into two parts. Let's say one third, one third, one third. Uh, one third would be let's say alternate business model like society redevelopment, etc., which are slightly less capital heavy. But the remaining one third will be a very. Uh, uh, it will require a decent amount of capital. Our estimate is to achieve our aspiration, we we'll need something around seven thousand to seven thousand five hundred crore of capital. Half of that is available to us. Uh, through our accruals, uh, our IC business, our debt to equity. We want to be very careful and thoughtful about our debt to equity. But that should be made available through us, through our internal accruals, through collections, etc., which, uh, which we will cover. But for the remaining, we are in the process of um, doing some um, discussions, uh, fundraise at a platform level, where even our parent is quite uh, uh, open to participating, given in... in uh, given their desire to grow Mahindra Life Spaces into a growth gem and support our growth aspiration, those discussions have started. The step one for us was to be very clear about our strategy. Step two was to demonstrate um, operational execution on the ground, including pre-sale, GDV, launches, etc. And those things, as, as we can see, uh, we, we start to see they are settling well and they are, they are shaping up well. And uh, we'll also be looking for uh, any external partner, and there is an interest in working with us. So we'll bring those pieces of information as and when they become uh, substantive and material. So yes, we need capital, and these are the ways we are solving the capital challenge. So this is very helpful. So a couple of follow-up to this. Um, so. Uh, if, did I understand correctly when you said that the capital will be raised at the at a platform level and not at the company level? Uh, uh, number one is that question. Uh, and second, uh, when we set a target of eight to ten thousand crore pre-sales, inclusive of IC and IC, is that the total pre-sales the brand Mahindra Life Space will do, or is that the pre-sales that will act, is net of uh, the places that will be uh, attributed to the partners and the platforms and other spaces. Yeah, so uh, so uh, capital source could be uh, anyone uh, that is aligned with our long-term goals. So it can be at the platform level, it could be at the parent level, it could be PERFs, it could be QIP. We, they are all open as long as it... Uh, aligns well with our uh, long-term investment philosophy as well aligns well with the partners. So no constraints on that. Um, the pre-sales part uh, would be would be would be cumulative. Like um, so, if you have a platform which is let's say 
we have a platform with Actis, we have a platform with uh, with HDFC, but we are the ones who own that platform or we, we are running that platform. So we show the pre-sales uh, for, um, for the total platform as part of our numbers because that's how we are uh, operating them. Um, if, if, it's, um, if it's any different structure that doesn't allow us to capture, we will follow the industry uh, industry norms. Thank you. That was helpful. And uh, uh, just to confirm that the Thani, you said the, the GDP potential there is uh, 15 to 20,000 crore. Is that right? No, no, no. I said Thani is around seven to 8,000 crore. It has potential, which is quite big, but given um, the economic factors as well as other factors, um, you know, we can only achieve that. But our total GDP that we have uh, in our hands um, is approximately 15,000 crore, inclusive of that. Understood. Okay. So my last question is, I mean, I you, are, you are running. Sorry. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Uh, the request if you can come back in the queue. Let's move to the sure, third. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Pradesh State from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, good morning. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first, uh, on uh, you know, the sales performance for this quarter, while we did well in Kandivali, uh, just wanted to understand was it our you know, deliberate strategy to hold on to the inventory in you know, other uh, ongoing projects? And uh, uh, because as, uh, like I can see, uh, you know, projects like Citadel, uh, etc., which are doing well in terms of such and sales, have not contributed much in this quarter. So, just want to understand that strategy. Thanks, Prithesh. I think, uh, um, I think, let me, so we, we follow, we are starting to follow a very, very disciplined strategy for any launch. Um, so, the, while the RERA came through for a couple of projects like Codename Crown, and even then in the month of March, uh, we wanted to make sure that it's not a launch, it's a very, very successful launch. And very successful launch is reflected in the velocity as well as pricing um, so that we get the benefit um, to, our, uh, to our business. Um, since they came in March, these are the two decent launches uh, in, in, in the quarter four apart from Vista. Um, we wanted to make sure that um, the digital marketing, channel partner, execution on the ground, our own sales team's readiness, uh, our own assessment of uh, and where we're going to land the pricing, all the, you know, all the intelligence required, all of that needed to be done. And I think this started to happen, but we want to make sure that from a launch to a successful launch, all these things have to go very, very well. So there was, you can call it a deliberate strategy of making the launch super successful, but it was not uh, driven by any other reason, uh, but just, you know, that's how to make them successful because this is where, you know, every launch needs to be done and we're building those muscles to make sure they're successful every time. And this is a great time for us to be launching because the market is strong, but what happens when the market slows down? We need to rely on those muscles to make a launch successful launch, right? And that's what we have been doing. Um, you'll see these, uh, you know, these, uh, the, the the pre-sales of those projects come through uh, soon, um, but I think we followed the successful launch effort rather than um, uh, anything. Uh, so, Agni, uh, on on the new launches, the timing part, uh, but uh, you know what? Be your comment on the ongoing projects. You know, there also we have seen some minor, you know, dip in velocity. Uh, you know, generally our assistance sales every quarter has been around 250 in the area of crores. Uh, but not the case this time. So, you know, just your comment on that would be helpful. I think, uh, you know, if you touched upon Citadel uh, uh, briefly, I think uh, yeah. we, uh, you know, this was one of those years in the first three quarters, we benefited a lot from our past launches or the phase launches. Right, and uh, they were in line because the amount of inventory that we released was only small. Um, so I, I would say that they are in line with what we had expected and what we wanted to realize on the pricing side because this is important for us to always balance velocity and pricing. I don't want to be 
um, saying that, oh, we had high velocity, but we gave, gave away too much on pricing given where the industry is. Or I don't want to be a situation where, oh, we achieved pricing, but we just didn't, sold, didn't sell uh, much in, 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 the, in terms of number of units. We are always dynamically evaluating how we should uh, have a view on the launch and the velocity and the pricing. So um, in Citadel and some of the other launches that we had in the past, we have we, we, we achieved what we wanted to. Uh, and that's ref that will be reflected in our revenue as well as profits in future years. Um, so that's what I would say. I don't think, uh, and I, we can, you know, we can have a follow-up discussion to share with you any more details, but we felt that this year one in our new phase of journey exactly aligned with what we wanted to achieve. Uh, and uh, obviously we are supported by the external market but we are preparing ourselves to build the capabilities for the longer term. Yeah, absolutely, that's, that's quite helpful and uh, you know, very clear. Uh, second, uh, you know, how do you think about the launch pipeline for FY25? Just specifically, uh, you know, a couple of projects that you have added in Bangalore recently, uh, you know, would, or, you know, will they uh, be launched uh, sometime around this year in second half? And uh, on the society redevelopment projects as well, uh, yeah. While you mentioned about uh, Malad, but uh, the Santa Cruz one, uh, you know, uh, would uh, would you would that also be launched in this year? Yeah, so we will have uh, roughly. I would say uh, right now the good news is we have very healthy uh, pipeline. So Wagoli uh, or a code name Crown um, will have phase one is right now. Uh, we'll see how the you know market readiness is. We'll bring phase two. Similarly, Vista one has happened. Vista two, Citadel one and two have happened. We talk about Citadel three, um, and there are a couple of others in terms of phase launches of uh, let's say projects that we have done, uh, the other launches that we have done. In addition, as you touched upon, Navy, Vestera, um, and there are a couple of other ones that we have acquired. Um, that will be part of our uh, F-25 launch planning. Uh, the, the, the two land, land pieces that we acquired in Bangalore, I think you may be referring to that. One is a larger one. It goes through two rounds of approval with two different authorities. One is a smaller one. Uh, so we will, um, I think that the, the larger one, the, the 10 acre one or 9.2 acre one will take nine to 12 months. We'll, we'll, we'll plan it in such a way uh, so that it comes as soon as possible, but we'll have to uh, respect the process that exists right now. We'll put all the efforts behind it. My sense is a smaller one uh, could happen sooner uh, because it requires only one set of approvals. So we are putting our all our uh, uh, muscles, especially the Bangalore team is fully focused on bringing that to market uh, at the earliest. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to strictly two questions per participant. Should have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the question queue. Next question is from the line of Prem Karana from Anandrati Share and Stock Brokers. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question and congratulations on good uh, pre-sales this quarter. Uh, so, so I have uh, two questions. Uh, one was I'm mean, going to talk about the competition on VD side. I mean, uh, the real estate cycle has been on an uptrend for the last four years now. There is active experience. I mean, all of uh, us want to buy. I mean, the developers community want to buy more to be able to scale up more. Uh, it, it, does that mean I any mean, the landowners or, or, or the JD parts are just wanting for choices and it's taking a little longer to be able to consume their transactions? And and then would it be fair to assume that the landowners would be willing to take chances because there is this exuberance and you generally get to get carried away I mean, in these sort of times, right? So they don't mind, they won't mind tying up with a little inferior developer, but then the idea of it is going to maximize returns. Yeah, yeah. You know, so if I uh, uh, pull up your uh, same question, I think you're asking competitiveness of the industry and then how do we work with landowners, right? Uh, especially, um, you know, even joint development as well as uh, outright, right? That's the question, Prem? Yes, sir. Uh, so, Prem, I think you're right. Uh, the, this is a 
um, uh, very competitive industry uh, and very opaque industry. So I wish um, it was, you know, transparent, clear, and everything was very um, simple. But it's quite complex, and on top of that, you had the approvals and litigations and the clean title issues. So uh, anything, any any land that has clean title is valued a lot more than, let's say, land with other issues. So it's a competitive, uh, but I would say that we are competition will make all of us better, right? Uh, and there have been situations in the last nine, twelve months where we have. Uh, we have been very sharp in execution and we have kind of gotten those land parcels or done the launches in, 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 in front of our other competitors and been very, very successful. So um, I think there is a lot for us to learn. Uh, our teams are quite excited, motivated with the, uh, with, the, with the result they are seeing on the ground and we'll continue to hone our skills. So it's, it, you can't wish away competition. Um, but we have chosen our batter fleets very carefully. We want to be big in Mumbai, Pune, and Bangalore, and our teams are very well settled uh, to to take on the competition. So that's my broader answer to your first part of the question. Uh, the second part of the question is landowners, and I must say that it's a balancing act working with them. And many times we find the asks and expectation quite. Um, uh, difficult for us to economically make a win-win uh, partnership. And in outright, you know, you can easily say yes or no, but when it's a, a JDA kind of situation, it's like a marriage for 10 years, 8 years, 6 years. We have to be very careful and thoughtful who we are getting in the bed with. Uh, and uh, many times the expectations are very, very high in terms of commercial hours. But we also find that many of the Many of the GDA uh, landowners also want to get a decent sleep at night if they have a good partner on the other side. Uh, and you've seen in this industry, if you make one mistake, not having the right partner who's aligned with you economically as well as value system and other things, it can take a lot of uh, your sleep and peace away. Uh, so we bring some of that to the to the competitive uh, dynamics. Uh, there are many players who will say, I'll take a you know, a shade lower return, but I want to partner with you because I can sleep easy. And those goes in our favor, but there are many other situations it does not. And we are learning to participate in this market in a in a balanced way. It's good to do deals, but it's also good to say no to deals that don't make sense. And we follow that principle uh, thoughtfully. Sure, this is really helpful, sir. And second question was, I mean, we have this large land uh, layout in in, in Murud, and there is uh, demand for second home destinations, and it's been there with us for a while now. And I understand we've signed an MOU. I mean, is it possible to be able to carve out a part of this land and launch something wherein you'll be able to offer something to people looking for second home destinations, let's say either plotted or something of villa or bungalow sort of, uh, so that I mean, you're able to monetize a part of the, the investment that it made uh, uh, some time back. Yeah, so absolutely. We, we The whole leadership team went there a, a couple of months back. We think it's a it's a uh, hidden asset for us. It has uh, it has huge potential. Uh, so absolutely, uh, we will uh, we are thinking exactly the way you described. This is um, just two hours from Alibag Jetty. Uh, we can get uh, a very green on a, you know, a little bit on a hill. You can see the sea, a lot of greenery. So uh, we are absolutely thinking the right way. And in fact, on a lighter note. If you are looking for a second home, let us know. We'll be bringing it to market in that area, in that in that region. <laughs> so, awesome. yeah. yeah. Thank you. I have a few more. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Puneet from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you so much, and uh, congrats on you know good sales momentum. You started your commentary by saying that real estate is a in a decent upward cycle, and then you also commented that uh, you think that land is at the peak of the cycle. Uh, can you reconcile those two views and also share your thoughts on how you think about different cities in terms of demand and supply environment? Puneet, uh, your second part of the question got muffled up. You said you know, it's a, we are 
enjoying the cycle what was what did you say the other part for the consultant you you also mentioned in in your comment that you know uh, we are well aware of the fact that we are acquiring land at the peak of the cycle correct correct, correct. so so if you can reconcile those two thoughts and also give a little more nuance view of how you think about you know different micro markets in which you operate and uh, if there is interest to go back to ncr in a bigger way yeah 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 so let me start with the reverse i think the right now i just want to focus on um these three cities uh, for now like so as i say internally 1 2 2 metro 2 tier 1 and 2 tier 2 and 2 tier 2 the world cities chennai and and jaipur which are tier 2 and chennai outskirts is like tier 2 um and we have land banks in those locations so we have to monetize that but mumbai pune and bangalore is where we are just focusing on uh, our effort and here we do have a project and we may go back but at least for the next 12 months we just want to really execute well in our core market so hopefully that's the last part of the comment that you had in terms of expansion the first part of the question is balancing act i must say uh, punit on this uh, i think um, the good news is that the moment land is acquired at a higher price the pricing also uh, captures that so uh, so you know it's not that you'll be out of the pocket in terms of the Uh, you buy land and the pricing is flat uh, or so the way we are thinking about is any time we are acquiring a piece of land we are very very diligent about the economic assessment related to that acquisition and we do lots and lots of um, market intelligence gathering to ensure that we are able to make our business case work at the time of launch but also at the time of oc because most of the bad news can come can can happen later and that cost and cost of construction related uh, and that's what we've always been doing whenever we find that we you know and i had to say let me give an example i had to say no to a deal that we all want thought was very good deal uh, and it just was just below our financial parameter and we all discussed that deal and we felt that hey you know this is just below our a uh, financial parameter but there is more downside if anything goes bad then there is upside and despite liking the deal and there are some other factors we ended up saying no to it so that deal discipline is as important in terms of uh, when you when you are in the hype on you know, up cycle and there is a lot of hype around the uh, um, real estate industry so that's what we are following up uh, very careful thoughtful about how we choose the deals and how we participate in the deal we get supported on the pricing side right the last part i just want to highlight is the growth will happen uh, i give this example in tanik all the organized players in mumbai if you count them together their market share is 20% uh, and given the cost of capital issue like gst and rera and all those things we see what i mentioned earlier flight to quality the there is a more more uh, momentum for the organized players and we will capture share uh you know these are the less organized or unorganized players in this space so that is another contributor to the growth hope that answers your question for it yeah and, and just if i may add uh, is it possible to share your aspiration of mix for fy28 both cities do you think in what proportion do you think they will contribute uh, in your uh, uh, ideally ideally it will be somewhere around 6000 you know crores from uh, mumbai let's say 5 to 6000 crore and couple of thousand crores each from from uh, uh, from pune and bangalore and if we if you want to introduce a new city we will look into that that will be on top of this so mumbai will still remain the most important destination for you it has to be because from a pricing and um, you know stability of the market um, mumbai is uh, very very strong understood that's all thank you so much and all the best thank you thank you thank you next question is from the line of shreyas mehta from equity securities please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a great set of uh, pre sales numbers sir a couple of questions from my side one in terms of kandivli land payment how much is done till date and how much is pending so i think vimal can correct me but 50% Uh, 55% is done 
and remaining 45% would be happening in the next, in the current financial year. Right. Right. Correct me, ma'am. Yes, so, yeah, so uh, little more than half is done and balance will happen over the next one and a half years. One and a half years. So not 12 months, 18 months, yeah. So 55% is done and the balance would be in next one and a half years. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And also in case, you know, uh, if you could help in terms of the land outflow for next, say, uh, over next two years from the current projects, absolute amount if possible. Yeah, so uh, fundamentally, I just add that what Amit just mentioned, mentioned in terms of our aspiration to acquire GDV, which is spread across Pune, Bombay, and Bangalore. Uh, you can do the numbers based on those is what I recommend because we don't share the exact cash flow uh, on a financial year basis. But you know the land cost in all these three micro markets. If you are looking for any specific information, uh, please let us know and we can take this off. Thank you. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll go back. Sure. So second question is, you know, I mean, uh, though we are doing as far as our large projects or, you know, the recently signed deals are concerned, but in terms of our uh, projects like Kalyan, Bhuvishar, Palgar, there it seems, you know, we've seen, we've lost momentum. So any thoughts on that? Yeah. So, you know, uh, I'll break this into uh, two parts. Our aspiration is to be a mid-premium premium player. Um, and some of these uh, locations are a little bit far from a demand supply point of view. And as a result, you see uh, the pricing or velocity gets constrained and the cost, because a little bit tougher location to, to make things work, uh, it's difficult to have uh, all, those, uh, all those work in your favor. So our goal is to, uh, to finish those projects in line with our commitments, meet our RERA customer commitments in every which way, and then evaluate whether we want to go to, whether we want to do anything more. And our aspiration, I said, is to be mid-premium to premium player, ideally as much premium possible. So you'll see less of those, but uh, we will uh, we will play it by the year for the right projects. Sure, sure. And I have one more question if I can. Go ahead quickly. Let's cover quickly. Yeah. Sure. So just a clarification on Thane, when you say 8,000 crores, that's the only, uh, you know, only for RACI part or it's a mix of commercial in terms of potential? It's a 50-50 based on the rules of IITT policy, 50% RACI, 50% uh, commercial. Got it, got it. Thank you. I have a few more questions. I'll get back to you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Komal Chaudhary from Ratnabali. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, I just have two questions. One is, uh, uh, other than the Thane project, which is a mega category project for you, do you have any other uh, project in line as big as this? Uh, so right now, no. Right now, no. We don't have. Uh, but... Uh, I would say some of our other projects like Kandivali is close to 3,000 crore. Our uh, Citadel is close to 2,700 crores. Um, so we have, um, uh, and if we are able to monetize, uh, let's say, uh, Murud and even the, you know, you know, a couple of others, uh, we they should be north of 2,000 crore projects. Uh, but right now, you're right. One mega project and mega project for us is anything more than five thousand crore, and category A project is two to five thousand. So we have multiple category A projects, uh, but a mega project is as of now only one. Got it, got it. And so, what about the Thane uh, launch? You had mentioned uh, that uh, you uh, launch it in uh, the first half of FY twenty five. Are we in line with that? Um, I think uh, we had. Uh, talked about about F25 or F26 Q1 uh, because the land has multiple approvals uh, common. Uh, one of the approval is for something called 631A exit, which has been secured in the last quarter. The next approval is to get IITT policy sanction, which we are already applied for. Post those clearances, then we'll apply for like the all the RERA-related approvals. So these are three steps. Uh, and we had to wait for 
Uh, some of this because the IITT policy only got cleared in August of last financial year. So, so we worked on uh, the clarity on what we want to do, how do we monetize it, get the exits from the industrial land, then get into IITT and then go into the radar part. Um, so that's what we are doing. My sense it will take another year or so for us to launch. Okay, okay. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Chatin Sangwan from Burman Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, congrats for the amazing set of pre sales number. I was looking at your presentation and looked at your pre sales guidance for FY25, which is like 3000 crores. But if I look at your launches, you have a strong pipeline of launches for the projects that have been already launched. For example, Kandibali, then you have Agoli, then you have Citadel. So, how likely are you? Or is your guidance conservative? Because according to the launches you have, you could easily beat those 3000 crores of numbers. So, what are your pre sales targets for FY25? <laughs> And Jatin, I think uh, you you already increased our guidance by 500. So over 3,000 crore uh, was uh, and that was a calendar year, right? In a way, right? It includes uh, IC and IC business as well. So we expect to generate uh, 500 crore or so from the IC business. So 2,500 is the guidance that we had given for uh, FY25, and then 500. So. So you can say we are already 2700 or 2800, 2800, right? Uh, on IC and IC plus uh, resi combined. So that's a healthy. Uh, and and you are right. Uh, the if you have achieved 2800 is 3000 aspirational. Our goal is to deliver and then talk about it rather than give a promise and then um, then not deliver. So that's what we are hoping for. Uh, not changing any mid-term targets. I think we should look at. Long-term targets like eight to ten thousand in F28 is what we are shooting for, and all of our efforts are aligned to achieving that. And you've seen the year one of the journey, and uh, I think the year two would be hopefully as exciting. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Webhub Sabu from Lipon EIF. Please go ahead. Uh, no, hi. Uh, so my question has already been answered in the just previous thing, but just one thing which I wanted to highlight, like, uh, uh, sir, you have mentioned that, uh, you know, that 3000 CR number is something which is, you know, the few want to be, it, but uh, just highlighting that uh, from uh, FI24, uh, you know, uh, 2800 CR odd number uh, that we have undertaken, if I look at uh, the lower range, that is 8000 CR guidance, for FI28, that comes out to a compounded growth of around 30% uh, year on year. Uh, so, uh, you know, just working on, uh, just working backwards from that, uh, don't, like, like, wouldn't the company be targeting somewhere, let's say, close to 3,300, 3,300, 3,400 CR, uh, pre, uh, like, see, plus IC and IC combined for FI25? So, so, Vavo, I think uh, we, you, you, you're right. Uh, that's a, a strong uh, expectation, and we will strive for it. But I, I'll, uh, uh, I'll hold myself from giving any guidance, given uh, how we have operated in the past. And hopefully, we'll, we'll keep updating you how we are progressing in these calls as well as one-on-one uh, -on -one basis. Um, but I, I don't want to give a promise and not meet it. So I just want to make sure that we do great work. We think of long-term aspiration manage our balance sheet and, you know, continue to deliver good results. Uh, understood. Uh, that's it from my side and all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Aditya Sen from Rubo Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I understand you uh, refrain from sharing guidance, but I just want to understand how much margins do we target in our residential projects, as we previously said that we target uh, mid premium to premium. So, how much margins do we target there? Around 30 uh, percent? Yeah. So, in our case, the uh, we uh, the so I just uh, margins better would be to uh, see the way. If I may, Vimal, and you correct me, uh, I think margins in this industry is a little bit uh, 
you know, uh, confusing, if I may say so. I think the right way to assess this industry is from an IRR perspective. Uh, so how much you put in upfront uh, for land, how much you put in, uh, let's say, between land to launch, and then from launch you start to collect cash, which allows you to fund uh, the construction as well as, let's say, part of your uh, land uh, investment. So that's, and then, then you get an OC and, you know, you get the project closure, et cetera. So you know the life cycle probably uh, very well. Uh, so that's how we measure IRR. Our goal is to be always north of 20% IRR. And that's, uh, let's say, project IRR, pre-tax. If you do equity IRR with the right debt to equity, capital structure, post tax it will come out to be a couple of basis a couple of percentage points higher uh, but we always look at this as a portfolio so right now we have 28 projects going on 18 projects are well underway five have been launched in last financial year five are going to be launched this financial year so you look at okay what's our uh, when this has affordable this has premium this has all sorts of other uh, vintage and it has all sorts of our geographic spread um, so we are saying that how do we, as a portfolio, deliver a 20% IRR, which is in line with uh, uh, the uh, the expectation that uh, any anybody should have from a return on invested point, invested capital point of view. So that's how we look at the uh, business. So not necessarily margin, because the accounting story gets very convoluted to understand the the what the projects are doing. But this is how we think about it. Thank you, Alke. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Meet Shah from Finovid. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. So, first of all, congratulations on a great set of pre sales numbers. I have recently started covering this space and as a young analyst, finding it difficult to comprehend few things. So my first question is related to accounting, like how do we record revenue in RACI and IC and IC business? I request Vimal to jump in. So, yeah, Rezi, tell me if I'm correct. Rezi, Rezi is as per the RERA rules, so only on OC you can count. It's 100% completion. And IC is practically in here. It's like leasing is as, as good as revenue. So in a way, if we lease this year, you'll get the leasing converted to revenue in the same financial year. Okay, so like our FY24's revenue is around 212 crores, while our lease premium from IC and IC business was 370 crores. Okay. So like, can you explain the discre discrepancy? Yeah, good. Uh, so the reported numbers so actually are as per uh, Indian accounting standards, which basically says that there will be line level consolidation for entities where you exercise full control. And that's the litmus test from accounting point of view. What happens in IC leasing entities, we have a stake, say in Tamil Nadu, we have uh, Tamil Nadu government, or say Jaipur, we have got Rajasthan government stake, where they do have uh, shareholding as well as say in the operating key matters. And therefore in those entities, only the share of profit, or say the last number from their penal, gets picked up into the India's consolidated number. Therefore, that's the reason top line you don't see IC leasing numbers, while in the bottom line or say the profit number, you see our share of profit getting added. Okay, okay, got it. And just to confirm, in Rasi business example, like annually phase one will be completed in financial year 29. So we will record the whole revenue of 1,200 uh, crores in FY29, right? Yeah, it will get recorded in the year in which get, it gets completed. Okay, and what about the related costs like land acquisition and construction costs in the same year, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, and uh, lastly, uh, what would be the value of our unsold inventory? Our unsold inventory, including various land parcels which we have acquired, should be upwards of about 8,000 crores. Uh, okay, no, I'm talking about the ready inventory which are ready to move, which are uh, shown in the PPT. 
ready to move in inventory you are asking yeah yeah ready to move in very very minuscule most of our properties and inventory is sold out there is a very uh, small number of about 60 70 crores which will be there okay 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 thank you for uh, answering the question thank you yeah thank you next question is from the line of himanshu upadhyay from progel rock pms please go ahead yeah hi uh, good morning and thanks for the opportunity and see my question is on acquisition okay and appreciate the part that we acknowledge we are uh, near the peak of cycle okay we have generally seen that the prices don't fall for residential projects historically by a very large number but the sales velocity collection and inflation or cost side uh, hampers the returns or irr also okay how do you manage those risks and also to one of the replies you stated that uh, risks can happen at oc level okay and for two of our projects which had happened okay historically so how has the process improved versus what we were doing uh, in past okay so some of your more thoughts on the process improvement and uh, more clarity on the philosophy of and working will be helpful yeah also i think uh, it's a tough question to answer on a short call with a couple of minutes i would urge you to come over and we'll spend time uh, with the leadership team to explain how we solve this uh, equation um and you're right uh, in this business when you're top of the cycle um what we are trying to do is um uh, we are trying to optimize this velocity and price premium project by project location by location in some some location we say that hey we don't want to sell out the whole project we want to keep some inventory uh, because we do know the price improvement will happen uh, based on micro market and comparison Uh, with other micro markets nearby and uh, competition etc so you're always making those choices but the 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 most important thing right now is that uh, the capability that are required to make that assessment is both intellectual and experiential right you you cannot be just say i'm very smart i can predict the market or i have got so much experience i will not do analysis both are the two and both of these things have to be happening together um, and that's what we keep doing it and in addition to that we have actually the the biggest thrust area for me going forward is going to be project execution especially cost of construction uh, the procurement the design specs the the design the design specs the procurement excellence because that's where you you will end up losing a couple of basis points a couple of percentage points of margin and being able to manage through inflation because the labor cost will go up 5% every year there could be spikes in the commodities steel cement etc aluminum uh, in a couple of years and your business case should be able to uh, account for that and that capability we are building we already had a strong one when i came in but the center the costing center of excellence the procurement team we just amplifying the uh, the effort that's required um the that let me just pause at that it's something that you'll have to experience by talking to our leadership team um i will welcome you to come over um and give us some time and i'll share more details and uh, one last thing uh, generally in bull markets what we see is land which is cheap is generally inferior okay or will take more time to launch it can be because of various issues and the land which is good is extremely expensive okay and how you choose where to focus on because uh, even a good land if uh, it takes more time and cost escalation or uh, uh, let's say lower sales velocity and all those things can eat away the returns okay so when when to or how are you focusing on and how do you decide that this is the time to be courageous to be patient in the market yeah so <laughs> that's a uh, you'll have to uh, 
see us in action for a few years for uh, for, you to, for you to determine that. My sense is once, see in this business the thing that we want to avoid is deal fever. ये deal करनी है बस करके रहेंगे किसी भी price पे, right? And that's something that we have been coached and we have seen from other industry that we want to be very careful with that. You know, we should be able to walk away from any deal if we don't think the contours, the guardrails are not right. And that's what uh, we we want to follow. Because in other, if, if it's a different uh, non-corporate or less organized player, they'll say, I look at cash in, cash out, and I can take the, you know, I'm okay to do the project. But for us, IRR is the mantra. We just can't uh, avoid that. So we're very careful when we're doing the deal assessment, uh, go through a regress process, and it allows us to judiciously take decisions. Um, that's what I would say. Okay, thanks from my side, and best of luck, Vimal, for your future. Hope to interact with you in future at some other level. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think we should thank Vimal also. This is his last analyst call. Um, he is moving from next week to Mahindra holidays, so maybe you can listen to him there. Uh, so thank you, Vimal, for everything that you have done uh, and the relationship you built with uh, all of our extended partners. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Amit. Thank you much. I think we had a couple of quick, quick questions. Uh, should we take just five minutes and close things out? Huh? Yeah, Pritish, I think you are. Go ahead. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Pritesh Seth from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry, just had one question again on margins, right? Since you have, uh, you know, started this whole scaling up in, la in last, uh, you know, three, four years, uh, we have now almost launched every uh, project uh, which we signed in last couple of years. You know, just on the project level, EBITDA margins or, you know, whatever margins you want to guide to us, you know, how are things looking? You know, uh, earlier we have guided for 15 to 18% EBITDA margin on a blended basis. But uh, do you see any upside, uh, you know, now on that number because of the kind of realization, et cetera, that we are getting, uh, you know, on those projects? And that would be just one question that I would ask. Yeah, so Pritish, as Amit uh, very extensively mentioned and uh, talked about the IRR focus, fundamentally what it means is that we are not getting into any land parcel acquisition or any launch which is not IRR accredited. Uh, by extension, what it also means is that any launches over the last uh, few quarters are not of our guardrail. Uh, similarly, the earlier projects, few of those may have got impacted because of slower velocity or real estate industry not really firing initial years. Uh, however, uh, we have got very strong controls to ensure that we deliver as per our committed guardrails. So that's where we are. Uh, overall, it's it's, it's very much on track. Sure, I'll, I'll take it off then. Uh, uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vidish. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Shreyansh Mehta from Equir Security. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the follow-up. So this cl one clarification in terms of origin Zendabad, you know, it's been a long time. We are actually looking for an anchor partner. So any thoughts out there? So, yeah, so origins, right? So, uh, yeah, so origin, we already have a, we're talking origins phase two, right? Uh, no, no, I'm talking about origins in the bath. In the bath, okay, 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 got it. Yeah, so we already have IFC there, right, uh, as our partner. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, you're looking for an anchor client is, is what you meant, right? Right. Yeah, so... You know, we get a lot of requests uh, for Ahmedabad, uh, which are small one, two, uh, three acre kind of, uh, you know, demand uh, from them. But we want to get to an anchor client, which is at least 40, 50 acres plus. Um, we end up saying no to the smaller one because it, it won't make sense for us to develop the whole infrastructure just for a small uh, revenue base. So... Uh, uh, and as, as we have seen, I've been there personally, what I've seen is uh, the land is still maybe five, six kilometers away from the, all the industrial movement and the warehousing movement and, and the build-out that's happening. My sense is the next two years, we'll start to see a lot more demand. 
we have right now a maybe two uh, good quality large uh, customer discussion happening but there is also competition with some of the other gidc etc that uh, create some of the challenges so uh, neither ifc nor us are in a hurry to find an exit from this we are looking for the right tenants right clients and given the momentum in the country as well as in gujarat we'll hopefully find good uh, good solutions got it got it got it sure and sir secondly as far as pune origins pune is concerned uh, what's the status there um the the three parts the part one is land acquisition for access road is um is is uh, fairly underway so the we had a lot of land parcel but you need to make sure the access is smooth and you know efficient so that part is underway we are acquiring the land then there is a switch cheese problem of where how we can make sure that it's uh, it comes uh, uh it, it's efficient from a layout perspective rather than one or two acres or layer you know land pieces in the middle which don't belong to us so that contiguity is being addressed and third uh, third part is this will also go through a very you know long arduous approval process so my sense is uh, at least uh, a year to 18 months before this can be brought to the market got it so large part of our ic and ic contribution would be coming from the existing uh, chennai and jaipur yes it will be jaipur uh, major as well as origin chennai uh phase 1 and then subsequently phase 2 got it got it thank you and all the best sir thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint that was the last question for the day i now hand the conference over to mr amit kumar sinha for closing comments um thank you riya i think i just want to thank the all of you for listening in and uh, uh giving your input uh and uh clarifying the questions uh, top of your mind um as i mentioned earlier we are uh, we are in multi year journey of creating a very strong franchise of mindal life spaces uh which uh, which will be a scale and stage which will have a scale and stage that uh, that will be an nv for many uh and so we are making strong progress some of the result that you see today are in that direction but a lot of work needs to be done for us to achieve that so thank you for your feedback thank you for your support we are um, any time welcome you for any additional feedback comments if you want to learn more about our business let us know we'll set it up uh, your feedback is incredibly valuable uh, and will allow us to push us uh, more to achieve better outcomes so thank you all for your support thank you On behalf of Mahindra Life Space Developers Limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect the lines